Hi Arches! In this video we'll be doing the chapter 13 mob guide. This is the gear that I'm using. I did not initially complete the chapter with this gear. I actually had a minor change which is the bull ring was actually a serpent ring but I have swapped to the bull ring because I like the bull ring better. I will leave a list of recommended abilities on the side here and if you want more in-depth info about the chapter 13 itself with the boss guide I will leave a link in the description box below as well. Okay let's get into it. So I already picked up multi-shot, which is a, a huge damage increase. Um, here we have the jumping spiders and the spinning rocks. The spinning rocks you should be familiar with. They just spin around and fire random projectiles in random directions. And with the spiders, they have a pattern. They fire three projectiles and then they jump, fire three projectiles and then they jump. The only the middle projectile is in front, but some general tips of this chapter, general tips, sorry. Uh, you just want to watch your hero or in front of your hero Try and keep your distance, this will ensure you will have more time to react to projectiles. I am so sorry that my voice is really bad. I have a really bad cough, but I'm trying my best. We have front arrow here. At level 5, you will encounter the tentacle mobs. So the tentacle mobs have two variations. It's a little bit long with this one. But the tentacle mobs um, are the hardest mob in this chapter, and it's kind of luck-based. As you can see there, it spins around, then it goes under into the ground and then it'll spin around again. It doesn't deal any collision damage. It might feel like it does, but it doesn't. Um, it's just the red projectiles that come out of the tentacle mob. They come out instantly and then they spread out as he spins, as they move forward, sorry. Um, so like I said, there are two variations. This is the first variation. The first variation of the tentacle mob is rather easy. To counter these mobs, at least the first variation, they're not a huge problem because when they pop up under you, they will not deal damage if you move away fast enough because they don't have instant projectiles yet. The tentacle mobs do pause there for a second and then they will, well less than a second, and then they will fire the projectiles. To counter these, I will talk about that more in variation 2, but while we're here with this boss, I will just let you know that this that chapter 13 did get nerfed. So this boss, for example, is nerfed. It doesn't it no longer just randomly, it sometimes can rarely, but as you can see, it spawns very far away from me, which is a lot better. You have a lot more time to react now. And I do think the tentacle mobs have been nerfed a bit too with their damage, but I'm not hundred percent sure. So other mobs in this chapter that we haven't spoken about was the red spiders. They're just a simple basic spiders. And these are the candle mobs. The candle mobs fire these long projectiles. It's basically four projectiles in one, like big fat projectiles. And they will fire, there's a pattern, they will fire two at a time. Not two at a time, but like two each. Um, I don't know how to say this. It's a, it's a set of two. <laughs> So they will fire one and then they will fire a second one right after and then they will move around then they will fire one again and fire a second one and then they will move around that's their pattern you want to stay as far away as possible from these mobs because of their long projectile it reaches you a lot quicker and if you're right in front of them it will hit you pretty much right away um, with the candle mobs this is the reason why i don't pick up slow projectile it's just a personal playstyle choice for me. I find that I do worse with slow projectile when I play it in chapter 13 because the candle mobs are there for obviously damaging you, but they also do a really good job at zoning out areas. And the slower those big projectiles move, the harder it is to move around because they're just they're just on the screen for a long time. And that's why I don't like slow projectile because there are so many projectiles in this chapter. I just want them to be off the screen as quick as possible. I mean, all of them get absorbed by walls, but if they're reaching that wall slowly, it will take, you will deal with them for a lot longer. It's a con and a pro because slow projectile also helps you react better to projectiles, but I just don't like cluttered screens. Um, I'm fighting the bees here, so the, I call them the dragonfly and the bees. The dragonfly, the blue one, splits. And this is why I use the death scythe. I use the death scythe in this chapter because the strong knockback pushes away these bees and this dragonfly. Ricochet counters them a lot. Ricochet is very strong against them and multi-shot is very strong against them because it, if you have a pushback weapon, it pushes them back twice. But when you attack the the blue dragonfly, it will split and then it will have two little bees 
come out of that. <laughs> I say that. It was split into two little bees. Um, you want to be as far away from them as possible because when the dragonfly splits, it will fire projectiles in all directions and the closer you are to them, the harder it is to avoid those projectiles. So I strongly recommend going for a knockback weapon if possible, like the brave bow and the staff maybe. I, I don't like the staff in chapter 13 really, but if you don't want to use the bow and the scythe and the staff, but the staff makes it very hard to see projectiles, which is the problem I have with the staff in chapter 13. Um, plus the staff's build is not very great for chapter 13 because mobs are very close to you in this chapter. Uh, you might have a little bit of trouble with Bright Spear and Tornado because of the weak knockback, but they do have their own benefits of doing a lot faster damage. So you might be able, if you have a high enough damage, you might be able to kill them before that's an issue. Right, so we just have more jumping spiders and some more tentacle mobs. So, like I said, I can't figure out for the life of me why the tentacle mobs spawn the way they do. This is why I recommend having a lot of damage. So the counters for the tentacle mobs, I have quite a few counters. So there are two variations. I'm just going to talk about the tentacle mobs. I already briefly spoke about everything else that should help you. Just stick with the general tips. Just stay as far away as you can from them and watch your hero or in front of your hero to react better. Now I will talk specifically about the tentacle mobs. So. There are two variations of this mob. When entering the level, you'll have a small window to kill them. They will spin around firing, fi firing projectiles in all directions before going underground. They will then pop up at a random location very close to you or even right under you. There is no collision damage, especially with the first one, but the second variation might feel like there is collision damage because the second variation when they pop up, they will instantly throw out the red projectiles. And that's the huge issue with these mobs. Um, what To counter these, you could either... For me, my counter is... I use... Um, what's it called here? I use a lot of damage. So I rely on having to pick up Ricochet and Multi-Shot mostly. Those are the two abilities I would love to have at least. But I still have been in this chapter without these abilities. It's just a lot harder and more luck based. But you want a lot of damage because I rely on trying to kill these mobs as fast as possible. If you can't do that, then you can have walk through walls. Walk through walls is from the devil. And basically because the mobs pop can pop under you, walk through walls will hide in. Basically you just hide in the wall when they go underground. I find it a little bit hard because the candle mobs can still reach me sometimes and that's the issue and sometimes their attacks go through walls as well if they're close enough to the wall so that's the problem with the candle mobs that's the counter to the walk through wall ability but that is something you can try and then we have these the phantom cloak counter i have used this one the phantom cloak is an armor piece i personally do not like it um, I've tried it and I didn't like it, but that's just me. It might work for you. So basically with Phantom Cloak, what happens is when damage is thrown, when you're hit by damage, so especially by the Tentacle Mob's instant damage, it will freeze the enemy that hit you. So the Tentacle Mobs will be frozen, will have some damage dealt to them by the Thorns, and this basically gives you some extra time to kill them before they go back underground. I can see the appeal of it, but I just didn't like taking damage in such a chapter that was very hard to do already. Bloodthirst is very important in this chapter as well because Bloodthirst can really help push you through the last levels where you're losing a lot of health. And then some other freeze abilities you can apply to the tentacle mobs is Ice Swords. Ice Swords and stuff that you can use to counter them as well, or Freeze Arrow to keep them from attacking you or going underground. So this is why Freeze Bracelet is really good in this chapter, because Freeze abilities will stop them in their tracks and give you time to kill them. It's very important that you try and kill as many of the tentacle mobs with Multi-Shot and Ricochet before they go underground, because that's when it gets really hard. So as you can see, I'm taking a lot of damage here. Like, look at all that damage. Everything just went for me, but this is why Bloodthirst is so important because I'm getting the heals back as I kill enemies. Bloodthirst is honestly a game-changing ability for me in most chapters because chapters 30 to f like 30 to 50, 35 to 50 are the hardest chapters in my opinion. Those ch uh, hardest levels, sorry. 
blood thirst really just helps you push through those chapters that you're struggling on helps you push through those last levels okay so that's pretty much all i have for the tentacle mobs if you have any additional tips for them please feel free to uh, let us know down in the comments below because it is hard i don't understand how to exactly counter them I, it took me so long to do this chapter guide because it took forever but yeah i with this chapter i honestly was stuck on chapter 11 longer than i was stuck on chapter 13 which is interesting i just feel like well the I'm not saying that you should beat it as fast as I did, but what I observed in this chapter is that a lot of the enemies in here, like the tentacle mobs, they're very squishy. They're very easy and quick to kill. It's just the projectiles, there's just way too many. There's way more than chapter 11. But if you have a lot of damage from abilities like multi shot and ricochet and rage and front arrow, then your success rate of completing this chapter is really high because you can kill them really fast. Um, I really like the death scythe in this one because the headshot really helps me take them out even quicker. And that's why I have chosen to use the death scythe along with its strong knockback. But I have completed this chapter with the brave bow, I have completed it with the bright spear, and I have completed it with the tornadoes. It's not impossible, but I found that using those were actually harder for me which is why I switched back to the scythe as my main weapon for chapter 13 specifically. Okay, so we're nearly up to the end here. So like I said, just make sure you stay as far away as possible from pretty much everything. Pretty much stay as far away as possible from everything. As you can see, it's really hard to do here, but ricochet really helps with that. Um, slow projectile can counter. The projectiles we can also burden you with slower projectiles which zones out things even more now we're just onto the last five levels i'm beating this chapter really easily it still takes me a long time this one took me 14 minutes but i'm doing a lot better than usual because of the abilities that i have which makes it quicker makes it easy to kill I haven't really spoken about the mobs in here that uh, that have appeared in previous chapters. I hope that's okay because I think those I'm just mostly talking about the new ones. If you want me to speak about for future reference, if you want me to talk about all mob types, even the ones that are really old and reoccurring, then please let me know because I'm trying to make these guides a bit more. It's really hard to make a. Uh, gameplay guides because I'm not sure how to not make it sound like a mess since I'm very organized in my videos I always feel like a complete mess here okay so we're nearly up to the last level here just finishing off the candlemen that have remember the candlemen throw out two of those projectiles at a time and then they move tentacle mobs so as you can see as see as you can see when he pops up instant projectiles instantly that's why it feels like collision damage it's really rough but if you have I mean maybe with the nerf maybe with the nerf they have figured out a way to counter them I I still couldn't find out a way but if the, if you have figured out a way please let me know because this, this would really help out the guide more since everyone is pretty much having trouble with those but yeah so that is all for today's video I hope it has helped you in some way I am making videos about crucible a new game as well if you're a pc player like a pc on pc i recommend you play that game as well because it's really fun and i do have more archer videos planned as well as with a new farming trick actually so that is all for today's video i hope to see you again for the next one like and subscribe comment down below if you have any of your own tips and i'm so sorry for my sore throat i hope to see you again for the next one bye